power does not travel in words. But power is the result of relationship. The power comes after the result of the relationship you experience with the Holy Spirit. And there's a seek of power intimacy. Jesus had that incredible experience with his Father that gave him the ability to be able to fulfill the will of his Father. We've come so far, but now there remains incredible spiritual strongholds that can only be penetrated by the supernatural. We have got to rise up to a higher level of strategic spiritual warfare that will demolish the last stronghold of Satan in this last hour, we are going to have to have a supernatural manifestation. The power will only come after we have an experience with the Holy Ghost. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. What I'm going to put in your mouth, you're going to root out. You're going to tear down. You're going to pull down. Don't you dare try until you get my word in your mouth. They filled Jesus with his humanity, with the Holy Ghost. And that's why you and I have got to have the same Holy Ghost if we're going to do the same work. There's a family waiting for you to witness. There's a church there that's dead, that's waiting for somebody with resurrection life and resurrection power, with the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome again to Live from Legacy. This is Greg Morrow on behalf of Morris and Teresa Srillo. I'm standing here on your Legacy Center Pavilion. We are about to go into day three of the legendary Morris Cirillo winning the battle for your mind. I want you to know something today. Brother Cirillo has been reminding us God does not want us to live in 80% victory or 90% victory. But I believe that there is a provision as we connect to this school of ministry for a 100% victorious, 100% clean, 100% free mind. If you believe it, say amen. The Bible says that the same spirit we have the mind of Christ. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. Well, I am so excited today. What a privilege it is for us to sit at the feet of over seven decades of breakthrough message. I want you to know the term school of ministry was coined through an experience that Brother Strillo had. It's the reason that there is an impartation for you today on this Facebook page from this incredible winning the battle for your mind school of ministry. In 1962, God was using Brother Cirillo maybe in a greater way than anyone on the earth at that time, preaching to 50,000, 100,000 people a night. He had an experience that changed his life. He was about to preach. He thought he was going to die. There was such pain in his chest. He turned the service over to his associate slipped off the platform, got in his car, went back to his hotel room. He said, God, are you taking me? And the Lord said, Morris, I've allowed this to happen for a reason. 
And then he asked Morris a question. He said, I want to stop you at this point in your ministry and I want to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you this question today because God is asking us today. What a question. Now you think about it. This is what God said to Morris, son, what do you want out of this life? I wouldn't be standing at this legacy center today if Morris Cirillo had not gone deep into his heart to find the answer to that question. He thought first, what a strange question. You see how I'm leaving my family for weeks at a time and we're reaching hundreds of thousands and millions of souls and miracles are happening. And then Brother Cirillo realized as he lay on that floor, God, I can't do this by myself. If I were to go every day, we would reach just maybe 2% of the world's population. And so on that floor, Morris Cirillo had an experience and an encounter with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of Peter and Paul and Esther. And he said, God, I need you to do something for me. Give me the ability to take what you have given to me that's causing me to go under your power and your grace and your anointing and your favor. Give me the ability to give that anointing to somebody else. God's voice shook the room and he said, Morris, I'm giving you an ability today to take from the anointing that I placed upon your life and like Elijah, pass the mantle on to Elisha. I'm giving you an ability to pass the anointing from your life on to many others. And then these words shook that very place. God said to Morris, son, build me an army. And I want you to know that this school of ministry that we are stepping into today is part of the fulfillment of that burden of Brother Cirillo's heart to take what God has given to him. There's gonna be an impartation today as we join Brother Cirillo in just a few moments. I want us just to review for a minute. You're gonna see on your screen a picture of Brother Cirillo pointing at his board as he would in the school of ministry. The things that I'm reviewing today, I wanna to give you a little bit of a clue. Many of these things will be on the quiz that you'll be taking at the end of this school of ministry. But in the first two days, here's just a few of the highlights. Brother Cirillo started on day one with a prophecy. You're seeing it right now. Thus saith the Lord. From this day on, you will never need one time to ever be defeated by the devil ever again. And somebody said, amen and amen. And then Brother Cirillo reminded us that the devil knows that we know, that he knows that we know that we have the power to keep him on his side of the line. And he said this, he said, your position of strength is in what you know. I want you to know the devil knew the sons of Sceva did not have power because of their relationship with Jesus Christ. They were trying to imitate the apostle Paul. I want you to know God has not called you to be an echo. God has called you to be a voice. Brother Cirillo reminded us, you're seeing it on the board right now, power does not travel through words. Power travels through relationship. When we have true relationship, we can know that we know and the devil will know that we know that we have more power than the devil. Somebody say amen and amen. And then I want to encourage him, giving you a little bit of homework. You're seeing on the board right now, Ephesians chapter six. Brother Cirillo talked to us about the armor of God, how that it's not our armor, but it comes from the armory and the arsenal of God. And I want to encourage you to just make a little note after Facebook Live today to go to your Bible and just ask the Spirit of God to speak to you. Say, God, what are you saying to me through Ephesians 6 verse 10 through 18? I'll tell you what God said to Brother Cirillo, and you're seeing it on the board right now. The armor that we put on for spiritual warfare is not ours. It came 
from the armory and the arsenal of God. And I love this because God is not depending on anything that you or I possess. You're seeing on the board right now, Dr. Cirillo conducting the school of ministry right where you are by the anointing, by the truth of the incredible legacy of his life. One of the greatest statements you'll ever hear, God is not depending on anything you possess. Take the pressure off of yourself. I want you to know something. God is not trying to find ways to put pressure on you. God is not trying to find ways to short circuit your destiny. God is trying to find ways to take pressure off of your life. God is trying to find ways to fulfill your destiny. And it's because of this great truth. God is not depending on anything you possess. God is depending on what you will let him make of us. I have to just share one more before we go into the session today. I love it so much. It's such a classic Morris Cirillo statement. You're seeing it on the board right now. He said, we have, when you really understand what we have, we have an incredible advantage over the enemy. He is no match for us. Father, I just want to thank you today as we join your servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo, day three, winning the battle for our mind. Father, I thank you today that that anointing, that promise over Morris Cirillo's life is still alive today. And God, you will use this time, you will use this message to release an impartation. You will build yourself an army. God, you will take from the anointing of Morris Cirillo's life and pass it on, oh God. Even though we're separated by miles, God, there is no distance in the anointing. There's no distance with you. So Father, we thank you today. We bless your servant. We bless Teresa. We bless the family today. We bless this legacy center today. God, I bless everyone that is watching today. I declare there is not one that is watching by accident today. Use this investment of time that they are making, Lord, to turn the battle for their mind around for good, beginning today in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. Would you join me in giving honor to whom honor is due? Welcome God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. Third offensive strategy. We're gonna arm ourselves tonight with the mind of Christ. I want to read 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2. Now, we are going to break the cycle of Satan's defeat. God gave me a promise when he told me to reach a billion souls. He said to me, son, a new strength is coming into my people. You are going to rise up so strong, so powerful. You will walk and live in 100% victory and be mightily used by God. That's the prophecy. See, it's just like a soldier picking up his weapon and going out to battle. He's got to arm himself. Third strategy, we're going to arm ourselves. First Peter 4, 1 through 2, listen to it. So since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, for you. Arm yourself. With 
the same thought. Here I go again, right through this route. Somebody say it after me. God intended, God intended for, me for me to have, to have the, same strength, the same strength, the same power. The same power. Jesus. Jesus! Jesus! Arm yourselves with the same thought, purpose, patience to suffer rather than fail to please God. For whoever has suffered in the flesh, now you listen to this scripture. Whoever has suffered in the flesh, having the mind of Christ, has done, put away in intentional sin has stopped pleasing himself that's where you are right now you've come to such a strong place of consecration and commitment and dedication brother there's no more room for intentional sin or pleasing yourself Is God so that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living by his human appetites and desires but he lives for what God wills arm yourself into total submission. It's not a quick fix. Don't you think you're going to stand up here tonight and speak the word and it's going to be done? Hogwash. It's not going to happen. You're not going to just speak it, say it over yourself, and it's going to be done. No! And it doesn't come automatic. It's not a quick fit. You can't speak it into existence. It's a daily process Holy Spirit just put your hand up and say I am going to arm myself with the mind of Christ. Now listen, once you make up your mind that you're going to live in 100% victory with a 100% victorious mind, 
you are going to be programmed for 100% victory. 1 Corinthians 2.16 again, we have the mind of Christ. We hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of his heart. Fourth strategy. Something's happening in this building. I just have to pause a few seconds. I can see a tremendous light in this building. Holy Spirit. Fourth strategy for victory. See, I have no idea. All I do is stand up here and speak to you as the prophet of God. Your life, when this school is over, will never be the same. I tell you, I don't know how much you pray for me because I want to finish these next two strategies quickly, but the anointing is so strong. It's just like liquid fire surrounding my whole being. Thank you, Father. Yes, you plan for it, God. For these people to have the same strength. You plan for it, Father. I know, I hear you. For your people to have the same power. I hear it, God, I hear it. You plan for us to have the same power. Perseverance. I hear it, Father. I know what you say. You plan for us to have the same powerful endurance. Yes, I know. You plan for us to have the same powerful weapons. I know, I know, I know, I know the same powerful spiritual results you plan for us to have the same mind as Jesus. I know. I know. is preparing us and is telling us strengthen your mind for the battle don't wait for the enemy to come and launch this in the name of Jesus keep up the attack I don't think you heard me no, I don't think you heard me. This is our time of preparation. We are being prepared not to sit back and wait for this counterattack. But because we are a chosen 
people and end time people and you and I are involved in the destiny of the revelation of God he is telling us continue to march against the enemy don't miss one beat You know what the time is now? You know what the time is now? To check your armor. Come on. This is the preparation time now. Brother, check your weapons. Check them out. No soldier would go to war without looking at his weapons, seeing if they're going to work. Check them out. Go through the practice of the battle. Practice it. Practice it. And then, brother, go get him. Go get him. Go get him. Jesus. Jesus. You know what we are tonight? No, God's putting us on red alert. Come on, God's putting us on red alert. He's telling you the battle is coming. The red light is shining. Get your weapons ready. Come on, get them ready. Get them ready. Check them out. Somebody said, I'm going to strengthen my mind for the battle. I'm going to check out my weapons. I'm going to strengthen my mind. I'm going to strengthen my mind in my prayers, in my reading of the Word, and going through the maneuvers. The test run. I'm going to see it works. And then I'm going to get him. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Brother, the red light is flickering. You and I can see it because God has privileged us to hear the revelation. Be on the alert. Somebody say, I'm going to strengthen my mind. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 13. Listen. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist 
come and say with this. And stand your ground on the evil day. And having done all the crisis demands, stand firm in your place. Should say, having done all. Say, having done all. Say, having done all. Having done all. It doesn't mean to be passive. Doesn't mean to sit around, brother, and twiddle your thumbs. Oh, you don't know what to do. It means you do everything you know how to do. It means you do everything God tells you to do. It means you do everything the Word guides you to do. Having done all. And then when you've done it, brother, you can stand. The trouble with most of you watching my television is you haven't even begun to start to do anything yet. Sitting around waiting for a bunch of television preachers to come and bless you all the time when God wants you to rise up in a new strength and be what He wants you to be. <laughs> strategy number five, the last strategy for tonight. your heart and your mind. Guard it. See, you don't do it because you don't understand. But once you understand the battlefield, You know what's in your innermost being and where the battle is. You're going to take better care. Don't be so light about these issues of life. Remember what we say, and what we said is inside the heart. Every thought, our entire moral, spiritual, mental activity, the will, the emotion, desires guard your mind guard your heart Now, there's a lot I'd like to say about this tonight. But in the interest of our time, I'm just going to read us a few scriptures. Listen. I'm not much of a sportsman. I don't know much about baseball or football or soccer or basketball. I've never taken time in my life to follow sports. But they tell me that to have a good 
football team, you got to have offensive guards and you've got to have defensive guards. Satan comes and his attack intensifies with greater forces than ever before guarding our hearts and minds cannot be a passive action maneuver can't just be standing there and defensively. The offensive guard in football is his aggressiveness. The defensive guard's responsibility is to use every maneuver, every ounce, every bit of his strength and determination to stop the opposing team. We've got to guard our heart, guard our mind with offensive aggressiveness and with defensive strength. Proverbs 4.23, listen to it. Keep your heart with all diligence and above all that you guard. For out of it flow the springs of life. Guard. with an offensive strategy. Guard it with a defensive strategy. Guard your heart. Isaiah 26.3 You will be Guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both its inclination and character, is stayed on you. You will guard. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request quest to God and the peace of God which transcends understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Don't worry. Did you hear that? Matthew 6 25. Do not worry about your life, what you will 
eat, what you will drink, or about your body, or what you will wear. Don't worry. Stop worrying. The peace of God will guide your life. Oh, Stop worrying. Stop being anxious. Present your request to God. Be at peace. Submit it. Surrender. Cut it loose. Trust Him. Put it in His hands. The peace of God will guide your heart. The peace of God will guard your mind. The peace of God will guard your innermost being, your thoughts, your intentions, your desires, your emotions, your will, everything about you. The peace of God. with us here I want you to say this out loud in your home as we say it out loud here right now stretch the hand of your neighbor in the air please say this after brother Sherlock today thank you God for these five powerful spiritual strategies which will prepare me for victory and which will enable me to defeat all the power of the enemy strategy number one I set my mind for victory. Strategy number two, I refuse to give Satan access. Number three, I arm myself with the mind of Christ. Four, I strengthen my mind for battle. Guard my heart and my mind with the peace of God. No worry. No need to worry. No need to worry. No need to worry. No need to worry. Well, if you are blessed, shout, I am blessed. Some thank God for Dr. Morris Cirillo. What a word from the Lord today. Somebody say, I'm not going to worry. Do you know the greatest commandment of the Bible over 365 times commands us, fear not. And the greatest promise, five words, for I am with you. Somebody just give God praise today for his presence in your life. David said, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Brother Cirillo is taking us on an incredible journey to winning this battle. Everyone that's watching today is in a battle over your mind. Jesus said to love the Lord, not just with your heart, not just with your strength, but with your mind. And I thank God for this revelation. I can't wait for tomorrow as we continue. But I have a very special blessing for you today. I want you to meet somebody that is so precious to this ministry, so special to Morris and Teresa, to our staff, 
He is a long time part of this team, just like I am over 30 years. This is Justin Bennett. He's an incredible man of God. And you know, Justin, in this ministry, none of us just wears one hat or two hats. I want you to know something. God doesn't sometimes just let you specialize in something. When you're a servant, like you are, you just find a need and you fill it. And so Justin is our incredible vice president of production. So that means anything that you get in the mail, anything that you get in print, any of the gifts that Brother Trillo has sent you has probably come through this man's hands and through his office. But Justin's not just our vice president of production. He's also our chaplain. You're seeing right now one of our chapel services that Justin leads every week. And Justin, you do such an incredible job. Our staff loves you uh, so much. But Justin, we're in an incredible journey. Yes. One of the reasons I wanted you to be on today is that I bumped into you the other day and you said, Greg, I have to tell you something. I just was reading Brother Trillo's book, Winning the Battle for Your Mind. And the Lord really gave me a word. Justin is also a pastor. So he's preaching every Sunday, looking for something, you know, for the people. And uh, Justin, I want you to say a word about this message, about Brother Strillo, and then I want you to pray as our chaplain for those that are watching today that are in this battle for their mind. Justin, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be on Live from Legacy. Well, thank you, Greg. First, I wanna say thank you for having me on this part of the Facebook program. And I'm so honored i uh, been with the ministry for 32 years, wow. and I am so honored to be a part of this ministry. Um, and, you know, just looking back in the past few weeks as what has transpired with the homegoing of Dr. Cirillo, um, there are so many memories. Yeah. There are so many precious moments that we could share that, that just... That, that just kind of takes you back. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. And I want you to share one. You know, I'll t I'll give you one. Okay. I, I, I a couple years ago. Okay. Well, quite a few years ago, um, I used to go work with Roger and go to the hotel room to pick up MC's things All right, for after the that, end of the conference. For anybody that doesn't know who MC is, Doctor Cirillo. Mark Cirillo. Yes. And I I. I remember this one particular time I went to his hotel room. Wow. And I'm telling you, he, he well, he act, actually walked me into the room and he, t he told me, he said, this is the place that I spent hours and hours in prayer before I go out and minister. And I'm telling you, the power of God was so thick in that, that I mean, in the hotel room. Wow. It was amazing. I, I And I, I just never felt it so strong. I had another occasion when, where I, when my daughter was uh, just a few months old, I brought her in, it's my oldest daughter. I brought her into the office to, to, to meet Dr. Cirillo. And Dr. Cirillo laid his hands on her. And it was as if there was this heavy weight I know what it was. It was the glory and the power of the presence of God that was in his life. And, and it was just a very, very special moment. And so I appreciate the, 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 the life and the ministry that he gave, not only to the nations of the world, but the seeds and, and, and what he implanted in my own personal life. He, he says, uh, um, you'll hear Dr. Cyril say many times that your life will never be the same. Yeah. And I can truly stand here today and say that my life is never going to be the same because of the seed and the word that God planted in my heart through this man, Dr. Morcerillo. We are talking about in his preaching that is as as he was sharing about not fearing and there is in this day a spirit of fear so true unlike anything we've seen before it's the battle it it, it is a it is a true battle yeah. and that fear fear we have people that are dealing with uh they don't know how they're going to pay get pay their next rent 
There's people that are, are dealing with fear of sickness and fear of disease. Fear of things that probably will never really happen to them. Oh, absolutely right. Right. And, and I remember it even, even this year dealing with even those same spirits of fear in my sure, own life. Sure. And, and, and here's the thing, when fear comes in, when fear comes in, it takes a root. And what it does is it, is it causes, it, it comes as a thought first. Yep. And, and when you begin to think about it and meditate on it, that turns into worry. Yep. And, and, and the next thing you know, it turns into other physical problems that you're gonna have in your own body. So it's what Brother Trillo was talking about in winning the battle for your mind. It's called the cycle of defeat. Absolutely. Yeah. And you go, you go into this vicious cycle and you just can't get, it seems like you can't break free. But can I just say this, just because it's so great what you're saying, is that's what this week is all about. Absolutely. This week is to break, break that Satan's spirit. cycle of Amen. defeat. There is an incredible outpouring of fear. You know, as Brother Thriller was preparing to minister in this school of ministry, and I have some breaking news for you on our school of ministry. I'm gonna share it with you tomorrow. You know that it has been moved and rescheduled from the hotel in Florida, but I've got some breaking news we'll share with you tomorrow. But the message that Brother Thriller was bringing was this message. It was a message on identifying and then removing the spirit of fear from your life. Amen. And that's what's happening this week, Justin, on winning the battle for your mind. Yes. So I want us to pray in just a minute, but I want you just to go ahead and share the thought that you were bringing, but I, it just so it ties into what Brother Strollo was teaching. We have to take, and the Bible teaches this, that we have to take every thought captive. Come on now, the chaplain is talking every right now. Every thought. We can't just allow one to slip in and then just start meditating on it. Oh, you get a bad report from the doctor's office, um, or you get, or, or you get, or, or the enemy just throws out a thought. And usually it's things that never happen, but in our mind, what happens is we begin to imagine it. It causes worry, it causes defeat, and, and then we're dealing with health issues. And so we have to bring every thought captive. I got a saying, you tell that thought, do not pass go, do not collect $200. <laughs> we have to take every thought captive, captive and, and turn it around. What happens is when we worry, what do we, what do we need to do? We need to replace it with something else. Good. A lot of times we think, oh, let's take the captive, the thought captive but so if you don't take and replace that thought with something else, you're just going to continue to worry more. And so you have to take the Word of God and you have to meditate on said. the Word of God. Now, I know some people say, well, I don't know how to meditate. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you know how to worry? If you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Come on now. Amen? Yeah. And, and we've got to take the Word of God and meditate on it and read it. We can't just, just depend on the preacher on Sunday to give it. We can't just depend on, on us getting it once a week. We have to renew our minds in the Word of God. What? It's great. Every day. It's a daily process. And that's one of the things that I, I got from Dr. Strello's message just today was he said, it's, it's, it's not going to happen just because you say a couple verses. I love it. it you've got to live it out each and every single day of your life. You know, Justin, I want us to do this. I want to stretch our hands to the people because I believe that what you said today was not by accident. I believe that there are many that are watching that are dealing with worry, that are dealing with anxiety. And I love what you said about meditating on the Word of God. And here's the thing I want to encourage you. The Bible never says anywhere to read the Bible. The Bible never says anywhere to race yourself through the scriptures and read the Bible through in a year. The Bible says study. study. The Bible says meditate. I want to encourage you. Don't get in a race when you're reading the Word of God. Do you know that there are some mornings where I will literally stay in one or two verses of Scripture 
and just get out of that what God is trying to speak to me. Don't compare yourself to anybody else, somebody that says, oh, I'm already in you know, the book of James, I'm already almost through the Bible. I want you to know, meditating on the Word of God is the greatest breakthrough secret in my life. And I believe that there is so much that we leave on the table that God is wanting to speak with us because maybe we live in a life that's a fast paced life. I just want to encourage you when it comes to the word of God, slow it down. The Bible says that he causes us to lie down in green pastures. You know what those green pastures are? It's his word. He restores us. He renews us. But we have to, like Justin said, meditate on the word, what you're doing by joining these Facebook lives every day and letting the prophet of God, who like Justin said, listen, when you watch this, this isn't somebody that just steps on the platform and just starts opening his mouth. This is a man that has invested hours and hours in the presence of God, bringing something for you. So Justin, I want us to stretch our hands and I want you to, if you would, just to pray for those that are really having this struggle in their mind over fear and over worry. And we just agree together in Jesus name. Father, we speak to our yes, partners that yes, are watching. Yes. We speak to each and every one of them right now. Thank you, Lord. And first of all, we break the power of Satan. Capo we break the power Capo of darkness. Capo we break that spirit of fear that has been assigned to them to, to cause them to get into fear, to get into worry. And we break that off of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Bible declares that God has not given us a spirit of Come fear, you, but of Lord. love, power, and a sound mm. mind. That's a controlled mind. So God, we pray that Thank over you, our Lord. partners right now. We pray for 100% yes. victory in their minds, in their thought life, in, in, in every area of their life, God, in their finances, in their, in their, in their, uh, their physical bodies, yes. we speak Yay, for the victory. Yes, God, I, I know Dr. Sorello said that, that God has not planned for us Come on, any man. defeat. Any. That's so, true. so God, we pray this over our partners' lives you, right Lord. now, that they will not face any defeats, but 100% victory, 100% of Come the time. On, so, so we speak that forth into their life right now in the name of Jesus, and we decree it by faith in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen and amen. Look, I want you to do this. I want you to put in the comment section. I want you to put in 100% victory. Yes. And I want you to go ahead and put 100% of the time over 100% of the devil's power. Justin, you are awesome. Thank you for taking time to join us live from Legacy. And this is who you will see when you come to your Legacy Center campus. We have an amazing team here that is here to minister to you. We have an incredible partner services, uh, prayer ministry here. We have so many people that God has handpicked. Brother Trillo, I believe God enabled him to bring together one of the greatest teams. We have many like Justin that have been, and it's a very unusual thing to have a team of people that have been together for 20 years, 30 years, 40 yes. years. That's because it's not the work of a man, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. And to be around Brother Cirillo is one of the greatest privileges of our life. And so now you and I have the privilege of carrying that anointing because even though Brother Cirillo is watching today from glory, I want you to know his mantle is right here on this campus. His mantle is right where you are. His mantle is on this Facebook page. I wanna thank you for joining today. I wanna to encourage you, if the message was a blessing today, take it, share it with somebody, invite them to be part of day four tomorrow. They can go back and watch day one, day two, and day three, and they can be a candidate for a graduating from the Winning the Battle for the Mind School of Ministry. If you haven't registered yet, use the link. We love you. We're gonna go off today and share with you a few more words. I mentioned yesterday, there's just been such an outpouring of love and words of honor for Brother Cirillo. So we wanna take you into a few of those. 
And then we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow on behalf of Justin Bennett, on behalf of our incredible staff, our television department, who is so special. James, we appreciate you so very much. My beautiful wife, Jerry, who is praying right now with her in-home prayer ministers. And remember, use the prayer number. Miracles happen when someone cares. We care what happens to you. 1-866-756-4200. We'd love to pray with you today. But until tomorrow, this is Greg Morrow reminding you that you are a part of God's end time plan and God has not planned any defeats for you. Now, take a look at this. As many of you may have heard, our beloved and sainted evangelist, apostle, missionary, Morris Sorello made his transition last weekend. I felt it coming. I have known Morris Sorello for well over 50 years. He lives in San Diego. That's where I was born. We knew his family, the ministry. My mother started supporting people like him and T.L. Osborne, and of course, Oral Roberts, when I was still in elementary school. And that I would ever travel with him, or I used to go to Mission to London every year. We'd meet him there and um, have great crusades. Some of my long relationships have lasted from those. Benny Hinn and I would show up every once in a while. My friend Mark Goodrich, who's, still, who's now living in the United States, longtime friends. Morris was powerful. He was a man of concentration, consecration, fasted and prayed. His son David is a dear friend of mine. His lovely daughter Susan, who has taken such good care of him and his wife Teresa. They were 88 years old, been married over 60 years, and uh, now she's a widow. But Susan and she are together. He just built and opened this fantastic place called the Legacy School of Ministry. Legacy really means what you left behind. I, I, uh, Susan gave me a complete tour of the place. It's not just a school of ministry, it is a school about ministry and ministering, but it's a, it's a theme park where you can take your family and sit in theaters with the multi-screens around you and actually feel like you're in Jerusalem or in the deserts of Egypt. And if you, if you pass by water, water splashes on you. You can sense dust. It's, it's, a, it's an active place and very powerful. I've sat in there, I've been in there, watched the films, and it's a whole tour. There's a restaurant there, there are hotels. You can have conventions and conferences there. It's in a very elaborate state-of-the-art place. It's just magnificent. And it cost several hundred million dollars to build it. And now he's gone. So we'll see what happens as we fill it. And have, maybe I'll host a conference there one day, right there in my hometown of San Diego, California. Thank you, Morcerello. Thank you, Mother Teresa. Thank you, Susan and David, for continuing the legacy as I know you will. I recently went to see uh, Brother Sorello and, and uh, Mother Teresa just less than a year ago, hung with them, loved on them, and then went back again. So I've always kept in touch with them. Whenever Susan was in school here, he would come and visit. He and I would talk. He was powerful in the pulpit, powerful all over the world, throughout Africa, India, Asia. Everybody knew Morris Cirillo and still does. He'll be greatly missed and always remembered. His legacy remains in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. To live as Christ, to die is gain. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Blessed are the those who die in the Lord henceforth now and forevermore. They rest from their labor, but their works follow them. His works are there, his legacy is here. The prophet went up, the mantle has come down. It's all good, because it's all God. We love Morris A general and a prince of God has transition from labor to reward. That's what I wrote uh, on my social media page when I received word about the home going of the prophet of God, Dr. Morris Sorello. I went on to write on my social media page, sometimes it bothers me when generals and princes in the kingdom of God transition and the world and the world's news goes on as if nothing has occurred, when in fact, one of the lights and one of the voices that has preserved their lives, our nation, has now gone to heaven. I know that Dr. Cirillo only cares that heaven rejoiced, but we that are here and remain, we must celebrate the life and the impartation, the impact of this great prophet of God. Um, Dr. Cirillo impacted so many lives. I, I count myself favored to be among those that he took the time 
to minister to and to share with. Uh, in my opinion, uh, Dr. Morris Cirillo was perhaps one of the purest manifestations of a prophet of God in the United States of America and to the nations of the world. A man, and what I mean by that, who operated his entire ministry from the prophet's office. Uh, he taught me a great deal, but I caught also a great deal just from watching him and being around that anointing uh, and that mantle. As a matter of fact, some years ago, when the spirit of the Lord spoke to my spirit and said, the prophet's office has come upon you and you are to function in it. Uh, I was impressed by the Holy Ghost to talk to Dr. Srillo about that very thing. And he imparted to me, he shared with me. Um, I ministered for him on television and he came to conferences and he imparted so much to this preacher's life. Uh, words can never express uh, the impact that he has had upon me. And I know so many millions of others. I, I can recall just about a year uh, ago, it was August of 2019, we were in London with Pastor Chris, Pastor Benny, Dr. Srilla were ministering at the World Evangelism Conference there. And I remember that Sunday, I wrote it down, Sunday, August 11th, 2019, when that great prophet took that stage and the atmosphere in that room shifted. And those of you who are well aware, and those of you I'm talking to are of Dr. Cirillo, he, there are times when he would come into room and just say a couple of words from the Spirit of God and the atmosphere would shift in a room. I'll never forget that Sunday when he imparted and uh, said some things, walked up on me and waved his hand and I went out on the power of God. I remember sitting there and I said to my staff, my team, some of whom were in London with me, I said, today, the mantle, the anointing on this prophet of God released me into some things uh, that changed my life in ministry. And some of the things we are doing today are a product of the anointing that the prophet of God released. This was <laughs> the original article. And we thank God for his life and his legacy to Mama Teresa, to Greg, uh, David, Ben, all of those of you at Morrisville World Evangelism, we love you. We are praying for you. What a life, uh, what a legacy, not only of ministry, but of people and influence this man of God has left. And I was thinking this morning, sort of like David, when the anointed had transitioned and David sat and he said, is there anyone of that house that I can be a blessing to. I wanna say from us here at Clancy McClendon Ministries, the place of grace to all of you uh, at uh, Marcella World Evangelism, we shall honor you and honor uh, the legacy just as we honored the prophet when he was with us on this side. We stand with you in anything that we can do to encourage and sustain and impart into what this prophet of God has imparted into us, we stand ready to do. We love you, we're praying for you, and may God richly bless you now and in the days to come. I wanna take this opportunity to say thank you, Dr. Morris Cirillo. One time coming home from the nations of the world as I traveled with him for 15 years, I said, Dr. Cirillo, I wanted to ask him a question and he looked at me and he said, I'm not Dr. Cirillo, I'm Papa. Papa, I love you. You are an amazing, amazing person. God gave to this earth. Now you're home in the hands of Jesus. What an amazing man, Dr. Morris Cirillo and his wife, Teresa Cirillo. What an amazing couple. To travel with him, I learned so much from nation to nation to nation. For the last 15 years or so, I, was, I had the honor and the privilege to be able to travel with him. When Papa asked me one day in Mexico, as he invited me to Mexico, he said, son, why don't you travel with me to the nations? I could not believe he was asking me that. Dr. Morris Cirillo, he was asking me that. He's an amazing, amazing person. What a tremendous legacy. 
As I saw him on the altars of the nations of the world, he would not get tired. He was like with, like with bat energy batteries, uh, energy, you know, those little rabbit with the energy uh, batteries of the commercials, nonstop banging that drum. Well, he, that's how he was. He was nonstop at 60, 70, 80. And I would travel with him. And I'm over here 55, going on, on 58, 59 now. And I couldn't even keep up. He, it was just incredible to see the ability, the grace upon Dr. Moro Cirello, Papa. And what an honor and privilege. 68 years of marriage. My goodness, 70 plus years of ministry. I mean, what an example. I have, or the body of Christ has. What a legacy he has left behind. Young, a young man like me now, I'm 20, married for 24 years, going on 25th, on our 25th year. Why? Because of what he has left behind. The example, the example. Oh my, 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 all I could say, if I was to sum it up, if I was to sum it up in one word, all I could think is amazing. When I walk through the Legacy Center here in San Diego, California, and I look around at everything that was done, it's amazing. It's just amazing. And now we have been given the anointing like Elijah gave to Elisha. We have received that anointing from Maura Cirillo, Papa Cirillo. He said to God, I want to give the anointing to others, and we are the others. Now he's in the arms of Jesus. Now we're going to take that anointing and impart it to the other nations and other peoples of the world. And by one thing happened when Elisha received the anointing. When he got the anointing, he did twice as much. Does that mean that we're going to now go to that supernatural level? Will we be able to do touch twice as much? We will keep running with the legacy because we are so privileged and honored to and honored to have such a humble man of God. You got when I when you know him when you knew him in person as I did, you realize how humble he was, how nice he was. He just loved people. And and now we carry this anointing and we'll do twice as much. It'll be an honor to carry the torch, the a man of God of this caliber. Dr. Morris Cirillo to carry that torch and pass it on. He passed it on now, not only to us, but now it is our job to pass it on to the succeeding generations. And the people after us will have miracles, signs, and wonders follow them. Things, unusual, supernatural activity will follow them. The blessing of God will be upon their marriages and their homes and their business. We, we just give God the praise. And Mama Cirillo, we love you so much. My wife and I just love you so very, very much. We're praying for you. We're praying for Susan and David and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. We thank you so much. And thank you so much, Dr. Cirillo, Papa, for leaving the Legacy International Center behind. That we may continue to go there and receive an impartation. And as thousands of people start coming to the Legacy Center in San Diego, California, from all over the world, like you saw it in your spirit, we will now be able to impart that anointing and they will go back to their nations and they will turn their nations upside down. God bless you, sir. Look forward to seeing you again. I'm Dr. Gary Whetstone, and I have, from a heavy heart of love and compassion for a man, a tribute to Dr. Mara Cirillo. He served the Lord with all of his heart. He opened his heart to me as a friend, as a father. He opened his family to me in a way that I've never seen him open to anyone else. And I first met Dr. Cirillo through one of his students in the El Cortez Hotel in July of 1984 in East Java in a city called Ungarang with Mary Hartante. And she was my translator and said, I never saw or heard anyone speak or preach with power like you except for Dr. Mara Cirillo. And I said, who is that? I never heard of him in my life. So I set on a passion to find him in 1986 in a crusade in Philadelphia. I met him as I went up on the platform. I said, do you know people in Indonesia know you? And he said, how do you know Indonesia? So I shared with him about the call of God on my life. And then the future was being written in my life. 
Never have I met a man who had greater passion and service to the living Christ Jesus and a world engagement to see the world brought to Jesus. He not only was the man of the platform that many knew in the power of God and the revelation of imparting the nature and the life of Christ Jesus, but he, to me, was a father and a friend. He opened his family to me and my life and family have never been the same. As we've shared literally thousands of meals together and I, I discovered how to seek God during our time together as we went throughout the world in mission to all the world, we'd spend hours in prayer together before the meetings just to hear the voice, the utterance of God. And that passion of pursuing the living God is alive in me because of my father, Dr. Cirillo. I come to you today with a joy of knowing that he rests assured in the throne of God, that he is carrying on his legacy through his sons. I'm one of them. And as we take our life and we live it to the fulfillment that God calls it to, we have not a memory, but we have an impartation from Morris Rillo, a man, a father, an apostle, a prophet, a voice of God to the nations of the world that have transformed the world and specifically my life. And what can we say without Teresa? TC, the greatest support and love and compassion and suffering is carried out by you as you stood by your husband throughout these multitude of decades and saw him go out and I had know the stories, I know the pain, and God gave you the world through a man that God called Papa. Today, we, your sons, Father, are carrying on your legacy. And as men and women put their feet on this precious soil called legacy, you're experiencing the grace of God, the vision, the power, and I pray the impartation of the Spirit of the Lord as you come to San Diego to the Mars Rillo World Evangelism Legacy Center. Your life, your family, your future will never be the same. Papa, we're carrying on your legacy. This earth will never be the same because God gave you to this earth and gave you to me. Good morning, we are in Morrison World Evangelism, GSN Center Mombasa, which is also a prayer command center, founded in 1992. Um, chairman was Bishop uh, Wilfred Lai, the pastor that has the largest church in Mombasa, 25,000 seater. And my name is Reverend Barnett Captain, um, the one coordinating Morrison Law meetings in Kenya. I'm also a member of the Chairman's inner circle, and we want to thank God because of the privilege. The impartation Papa has given us, like the, this, the people seated here are intercessors. This God's victorious army, please send, great, send greetings to Mama and Teresia Sololo and the family. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mama, we are standing with you thanking God of what uh, the life that uh, Papa Sololo has lived on this planet Earth. Uh, he has, it has not been in vain. He has imparted to us and we want to promise that uh, the deposit of the treasure from heaven, which he asked God, that God give me the anointing and give me the ability that the same anointing you have given me, I'm able to pass it on to other people. I believe you have received the anointing that Papa yes. left to us yes. and you will soldier on. So we want to thank God because of uh, the life of Papa Cerullo. And uh, at this time, we want to say, Mama, we are standing with you. And we would like you to understand that you have uh, sons and daughters throughout the whole world. Of the 5,000 GBM members trained all over the world, we are part of that. And we promise and agree that we shall be able to stand with the vision that God gave the man of God, because God told him, my son, let this ministry not die. I want to thank God that uh, 
uh, at the last quality conference, uh, he called me and Benson Damia uh, here uh, from uh, uh, from Mombasa. And before he went to minister, uh, the last day of the conference, he called me and uh, I knelt before him, I had an offering which I gave together with my brother and he prayed for me and said, son, go and do the work of the Lord. On Friday and Thursday when we received information that we need to pray for Dr. Cerullo, it's in critical condition in hospital. While I was in prayer, this word came and the word were that if I take Cerullo from the earth today, will you continue being faithful in ministry? I didn't know what that is a question meant. But now I know God's plan was that he was taking Papa home. And I together with the, these uh, intercessors that are here, we all together agree that yes, we are going to continue fulfilling the Great Commission. Amen. Are we Amen. together? Amen. We continue the, with the Great Commission. So we, 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 we pray that Mama be strong. And we also commit, uh, we also ask the staff in San Diego, thanking God for our international director, uh, Senior Vice President Don Mandel, that has been of great uh, help and invitation into our life. Together with Greg and Ken, together with the, the associate minister that has been with Cerullo, that left all his ministry and came to join the servant of God, of God, Dr. Gary Watson. God bless you and thank you, David and Susan and all the family. Please know that we're standing with you. We shall continue standing with you as Dr. Cerullo was, as said the same. He's just been uplifted in glory. But I know that the spirit, in spirit will continue being with you because work continues. We we'll attend all the conferences. We'll be doing all the assignment that the world may come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Thank you, and uh, we're praying that God strengthens you at this time. Know that you have a people that stand with you. Thank you, and God bless you.